Hey guys, today we'll be automating the fishing task in the game Play Together. The mechanics of the game are really simple. As a player, you cast your fishing line, and when a fish bites, you click the reel to pull them in. This video will continue to build upon other concepts explained in the past videos while introducing some new ones. So let's jump into the game plan. Our first task is to give our bot eyes so that we can interact with the game. We will be doing this by mirroring the screen from our phone onto our computer. Next, we need to let the bot know which area of the screen to look at. We will do this by defining the game area and then having the bot take continuous screenshots so that we will have information to work with. Now that the bot can see the screen, we want it to be able to find specific objects. We will do this by creating templates of the objects that need to be found. In this case, they are exclamation marks displayed when a fish is on the line. Because a fully colored image and template would require a lot of computing resources and time, we will ease the load on the bot by processing them first and converting them into a grayscale. We will now have the bot compare the template we want it to find against the screenshot it took of the gameplay area. It will do this over and over and over until the object is found. To give us a visual indicator, the bot will then draw a red rectangle around the template when it has identified it. Identification of the template will cause the bot to initiate a click sequence. First, it will click the reel button to pull the fish in. Next, it will click the store button to put the fish in our bag. And finally, it will restart itself by clicking the button to cast the line again. And that's pretty much it. Let's uh, go ahead and code it up. To mirror our phone to the computer, we will use a program called SCRCPY. I have made a video on how to do this and it is linked in the description. Since we will not be sending Python commands directly to the phone, you would only need to watch up until the minute 45 mark. Once your computer is mirroring successfully, we can now open our Python environment. For our project, we will be using five different libraries. The first is PyInput for controlling the cursor and sending clicks. The next is NumPy for creating arrays with our image data. MSS is used for taking screenshots. CV2 is a library that enables computer vision and will let us identify our template. And finally, we will use the time library for its sleep function. We need to define the gameplay area so the MSS library will know what needs to be screenshot. To do this, we will use the coordinate tool that we built in the piano tiles video to get the top left and bottom right corner of the gameplay area. After the information is gathered, we can comment out the coordinate tool and record the X and Y values that we've obtained. Now we have to get our template. The template that we are going to use is the exclamation mark that appears when a fish is caught on the line. To do this, I use Windows built-in snipping tool. When the exclamation appears, click the new button on the snipping tool and it will freeze the screen, allowing you to select the part that you want. Because the template takes into consideration the background of the object, we will need to get templates of the exclamation during the day and the night in order to, to get an accurate match. Save these images and note their file path on your computer. These will be placed inside CV2's imread function and assigned a variable name. Going back to taking screenshots, we will use MSS library screenshot function called sct.grab and input the gameplay area coordinates that we found earlier and assign it to a variable called screenshot. At this point, our bot should now be taking a screenshot of the gameplay area every loop. Because we will need the data of the screenshot in an array format, we can now use NumPy's function as array to convert the screenshot into an array and assign it to a variable named image. 
Now we will do some quick image processing of both the gameplay area screenshot and the two templates that we've created getting their grayscale versions. To do this we will use CV2 CVT color function and assign them to a new variable. For template identification purposes we will need the dimensions of the templates. We can easily do this by using CV2 shape function to assign the width and the height to variables. I have assigned the width and the height of the night exclamation template to night W and night H and the day version to day W and day H. Oftentimes when dealing with image processing it's hard to tell exactly what the bot is doing. Using CV2 it's possible to create a display to make sure your program is running as expected. We can create a mini display to see what's happening by first resizing the images that we are capturing using the CV2 resize function and then displaying it using the IM show function. In this example, I have created a mini display showing our grayscale game area that is being captured by MSS. Now we will have the bot search the gameplay area for any matches of the template. We could do this by using the CV2 match template function. The result is stored as a fraction of one with one being a perfect match. I have found that 0.8 tends to be a high enough match that it will filter out any false positives while increasing the rate of detection of our template. When the bot finds the template, it will store its location and we will use this to draw a rectangle around it and enter an if conditional statement where we can initiate our click sequence. Because we have both a day and night template for the exclamation mark, we need the bot to provide match results for both of them and also provide two if conditional statements when they are found. We now have all the elements in place to test our template matching bot. Watching the mini display, we want to see if our bot can draw a rectangle around the exclamation indicating a fish was caught. Alright, it seemed the bot picked up perfectly, which means we can now proceed to our click sequence. If you're having any trouble, it's sometimes helpful to check the output of the results. Using control F, you can see any attempts that were close to 0.8. Oftentimes, if the score remains low and no matches are found, a new template is needed. Using the coordinate tool again, we will now record the series of positions and clicks that need to be performed when the template is detected. The coordinates of the first click will be to reel in the fish, the next click will be to store the fish, and finally, we will need the coordinates of the cast button to restart the bot. After these coordinates are obtained, they will be inputted into the X and Y coordinates of the mouse position function. These will be followed by a click function to initiate the action and the sleep function can be used to pause the bot while the game transitions to the next animation. Our bot is now complete. The only thing left to do is to put it in a while loop and see if it can catch multiple fish. While testing the bot, I have noticed the game seems to have many anti-botting mechanisms in place that would require extra workarounds and would be areas of further explorations. If you watch to the end, you can see one of these.
I really enjoyed making these videos. If you have any ideas of what you'd like to see next, drop a comment below. I find automation of any tasks, whether it's game related or not, fun to explore. I also wanted to explore electronics and other physical bots. So if you have any cool ideas, please let me know. The code to the bot can be found at my GitHub and that will be posted in the description below. And again, thank you for watching.